Got the tool buckets packed up, work belt. Pulling out of the driveway, and we're gonna go install a tankless water heater on my sister and brother-in-law's house. They don't live too far from me. The problem is they have a 40 gallon water heater, it's pretty old and it still works, but they just run out of water constantly. And I, for years, used these tankless water heaters and since I've used those, I will never go back. Um, they are so amazing, never running out of water. And if you have a decent sized family and you're running, you know, doing laundry and dishes and everybody's showering, it just, you you go through 40 gallons of hot water pretty fast. So these things are more efficient. Um, you never run out of hot water. So I recommended he put this in and I told him I'd help him. So we're headed over there to do that. Guys, we are here and we're ready to go. There's the old water heater there. And we're gonna mount the new one right here. So I'll mount it off that. I'll bring some two by fours down off that floor joist. That way I don't have to drill into the concrete block. So we're gonna go out through one of these sills here. There is a porch out there. So I'm gonna go outside to this window, measure from here over to see how far I can go over and where we're gonna have to get our uh, um, exhaust and intake pipes out. So. Um, in these older houses, you can see there's always all kinds of stuff going everywhere. So we're gonna try to make this as clean an install as possible. The first thing we gotta find is where we can go out this silt plate without that porch being an issue. All right, so here is the porch in question. There is the window. So really, we want to come out next to this. At least this will give me a point of reference. Um, go over as far as it's basically 12 inches over to the edge of that deck. So, as you can see, 12 inches. We hit that. So I'm going to have to go through right here, which means I'm going to have to bust all this block out right here. We'll bring both uh, intake and exhaust through this section. All right, so my first step here was to figure out where I could uh, put the intake and exhaust vents. So I located the spot where I could get between two joists. They had some old stone or brick in there that I used a hammer drill and a half inch uh, bit to break out. And then there was like a double sill plate there. So it's still good and solid. Now that I know where I'm going to vent it, it's time to figure out how to mount this thing on this concrete block wall. And the Richmond water heater that I'm using comes with a mounting bracket. So what I've chosen to do here is to run some 2x4s down the wall. The reason I would prefer to bring 2x4s down versus going into that block wall is because those are hollow and I don't trust anchors in hollow block walls to uh, be strong enough over time so I can guarantee by putting some 2 by 4s into the floor joist, screwing them in, that this water heater, heater will be mounted securely and won't. there will be no risk of it falling. As I'm putting this up I had to put a couple shims up at the top just to get that 2 by 4 to run flat down the wall. All right, so we got our mounting two by fours up. We had to shim the joist out there a little bit uh, just so they would sit and run flat down along the wall. We got two of them across there. Now we can mount our mounting bracket to there, and then the bottom will screw through this little patch I put in right here, and I just toe screwed it right through into the two by four. So. So once the mounting bracket is leveled and screwed on, all you have to do is take your water heater and slide it into the grooves on that bracket. And it's as easy as that. This venting here. And we're gonna run that straight up here and across and out right there. All 
All right, so all I use is this Diablo. We're using two inch pipe because we're close enough to use two inch. This is two and a half inch. So two inch PVC will go through that once it's all done. So if you look in your manual, they will give you all the specifications for the length of pipe you can run in two inch, or if you have to go to three inch, it'll tell you the 90 degree elbow is worth three feet and a 45 is worth one and a half feet. So just make sure you read your manual before installing your piping. All right, so we got the intake all dry fitted in and I start here at the unit, come up. This one can be level, the exhaust, needs to have a slight angled back towards the unit and that's for condensation purposes but this one's just slight i run this one slightly above level two but we got it all dry fitted in there like i've showed you guys before i make my marks on here so when i take this apart and glue back together i get it all back in the same spot now that we have it dry fitted and all my marks made uh, i take it apart piece by piece and uh, glue it together starting at the water heater and working my way to the outside. And then I just repeated the process with the exhaust portion of the pipe. And once that's done, then we can go out and terminate it outside the way the manual requires. So I like to try to get these um, up as close to the ceiling as I can, just so it's out of the way. We're just missing that window there, so we're, I mean, it does, the window doesn't open anyway, but we just gotta go outside, finish the outside, then we can seal those up, and then we can put this water line back over and be able to put the water line back right where it was at, so. This exhaust, which is this one, has to have a slope downward back to the unit, and that's for condensation purposes, so you can see from here, this has got a slight slope. We got our vent in our exhaust and there's all kinds of rules with this that is not an operable window um, this is not an operable window so we're plenty far away from any operable windows um, the directions for this the exhaust and uh, intake have to be 12 to 24 inches apart um, so I just use I've always just went with what the directions say and I've never had an inspector uh, ding me on this. I do, one thing I do do is put just screws in these right here in case I ever need to take this, this off or whatever. But this is all done out here, so now we can go in and hook the uh, water and gas up. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install shut off water valves onto the water heater. Uh, there's a red one for the hot side and then there's a blue one for the cold side and it's as simple as putting some Teflon tape onto the connection screwing the uh, fitting on there and that's about it uh, there is a relief valve that goes on the hot side that is supplied with this valve kit that I use so there's the valve kit I think I forgot to hit record but I got that installed it literally just screws on the hot fitting and the cold fitting and then you got a relief valve off the hot side and these are like drain ports here but then it's got each of them have an on off but it's just a kit you can buy with these water heaters that supplies you with the relief valve and uh, these hot and cold valves the next step is cutting your hot and cold from your existing water heater and if you look at the old water heater on top it should say hot and cold and you should be able to identify it accordingly So we got that on there. This will always be exposed, so if this, these end up leaking, you can easily change them out. If you wanted to use like a uh, sweat to a PEX, you could. These are just nice and easy. So we'll just hook our PEX up to here, bring it down, round into our cold. Now we're gonna cut the hot back here, and then we'll be able to bring that down and around. All right guys, so this is the uh, water supply. I chose to use these Watts press connectors because they'll always be exposed. I've had really good luck with them. So put an on off here. This is the hot, so it'll come from. So 
supply the water heater and then it'll come up and supply all the water to the house right there. So I got shutoffs right there. So I can actually turn the water back on to the house so there will be water to all the toilets and sinks and stuff. Just won't be hot water yet. So the main gas line comes through here. I'm going to look for a shutoff. Let's see if I can find one. That gas pipe comes... Where's it at? Here it is, right here. And there's no shutoff. So I'm going to have to go out and shut it off with the meter. So here's the gas meter right here. So it goes into the house right here. But you can see this this thing right here is where you turn it off. So they can actually shut your gas off and lock you out of it. So that should be shut off. I'm gonna go start the stove. and let the gas run off and then we'll take that pipe off and get our connections made. It's already burnt off. Shut the thermostat off so the furnace doesn't miss fire. Now we're ready to unhook the gas line and get our stuff all hooked up. So as soon as I get that I can put a, I got an, ball valve so they can turn their gas back on. All right, so we followed the gas line all the way in. Here's the main line it comes. There's a T here that supplies the furnace. So we gotta leave this, but my plan is to come off this um, with CSST around and then take black pipe down. So we're gonna disconnect it here. This is what feeds the current water heater. So we'll take that union off, pull all this off, Put a new fitting in here and we'll be good to rock and roll. Alright, so we got all this taken off and then we this is one inch pipe. We gotta get down to three quarters, so we got a one inch to three quarter inch reducer and then we're going to have our fitting which is a male uh, threads and then we have the CSST fitting on the other side but I'll get this in um, I can actually turn the gas on to here check this for leaks and then I'm going to run flexible around up here over to black pipe and then down so on my threaded gas connections. I like to use Teflon tape and pipe dope. That's just how it was taught and I have good luck by doing that. All right guys, we got this um, on off valve fitting. It's a CSST fitting, so we're gonna go ahead and hook our hose up. You cut back the sheathing four rings, put your lock nut on. You have a split washer, which you just pulled apart. Be careful, you don't wanna break that. Slide that on the fourth ring. Squeeze it back together, which I think I missed a little. I did. Missed a little bit of the sheathing. There. So you put that split washer on there, squeeze it together. Then you have your solid washer. And then you have your O-ring. Just make sure that's good and clean. Stretch it over there and then roll it all the way back. So now you got on there, you just put that in there and then you want to go hand tight. As tight as you can get it by hand and then no more than a half a turn with a wrench. That's very important and then you're just going to have to check it for leaks. So stick that end in there, get it squared where that O ring's up against there. So we're hand tight and then I'm just going to tighten it no more than a half a turn. 
And I just use channel locks because it's really not that hard to turn. That's about a quarter turn. And then it should be good. And we'll check it once we turn the gas back on. So now we Make sure you put clamps to hold your stuff nice and tight. I put another 2x4 down, so we bring the CSST here. We transition it to black pipe, so anywhere down here where people are going to be moving around, it's protected. Got our sediment trap. Now we got to come off here with a nipple. We can hook our gas line up, and then we'll hook the two water lines up. We're going to turn the gas on, check for leaks. Just use the uh, Dawn dishwater soap and water. Don't see any there. Got lots of connections over here, so let's uh, see if we got anything here. So my camera stopped while I was checking for leaks, and even though I'm not excited I had to fix this, fix this, I'm excited I have a leak so you can see what it looks like when it bubbles. And you can see right there. That's what it looks like with this uh, soapy water solution when you get a leak. I'll spray some on here and you'll be able to see it bubble. That's what it looks like when you have a leak. So I just got to shut the gas off, take this off, and see what the problem is. It's going to be hard for you to see, but it kind of looks like my O-ring wasn't in there perfectly square. So we're just going to try to re redo it. I think it was just kind of cockeyed a little bit and it was only sealing on part of it. So we'll redo that and then hopefully that'll fix the problem. Oh, I think we got it. I think it was just that O-ring was in there a little cockeyed. That's why it's important, guys, that you check your gas lines for leak when you install new ones. Um, it happens, and you just need to uh, make sure you make it right and get it fixed. But now that we got that done, we're just going to hook our uh, fittings up to connect our PEX to, put our PEX lines in, and then uh, we'll be about finished. Uh, the last thing we have to do is put a condensate line uh, to the unit over to the drain and then we should be able to fire it up We're all hooked up. We got red packs for hot. So as it leaves we know this is the hot line Got the blue coming in. We got our condensation line on Got it secured the pipe secured here and then it loops up over and tees into where it needs to go But this condensate line needs to run to a drain and these put off quite a bit of condensation as they're running. You see how much more room this saves. That mounts on the wall, it's nice and clean. And then we're going to get rid of this. We can get rid of this pipe that vents out the chimney. We'll just probably fill this uh, with spray foam or stuff it with insulation so cold air doesn't come in. But he's going to gain all this space here. Uh, to build some shelving or something for tool storage or whatever he wants, but Get this thing going and then we'll get that old one out of there All right, so to fire this thing up we turned the power on now We're going to turn all the water valves on and then it's as simple as just powering the unit on
Go turn your hot water in your bathroom down here. Just like on the sink, just turn it on. Just turn the hot on and let it run. Okay. So the way this works is as soon as somebody turns on hot water somewhere, it starts flowing water through the unit and kicks it on and starts heating the water. It's as simple as that. This thing's running, guys, and it is quiet. But once you got everything hooked up, you got the gas lines checked for leaks, you got your water lines hooked up, it's as easy as opening all your valves. You want to open your valve here, you want to open your valve here. I gotta open my valve up here to allow water in and allow water to go back to the hot side of the system. And then power it on and turn your hot water on. So that's about all there is to it. Alright, well we are officially done. We've got the old water heater out. You can see how that opens up that space they have down here. We've got the new one all done. But we took the relief pipe off the old water heater and put it, cut it to length and put it on here. Got our condensate line on, ran over to the drain. Checked for leaks, we're good up to this point. But we'll check back later. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, install video on a tankless on-demand water heater in an existing house. I have one more to do in the house I'm building right now that's a new const new construction so it'll be pretty much the same but there'll be a little bit uh, there'll be a few things that are different on mine so I'll bring you that video when I do that but thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next video